When I learn something new that actually works and is useful, I start applying it to absolutely everything, which is why if you've been around at all, you've heard me talk a lot about this idea of head, what I think, heart, what I feel, hands, what I do. And the reason I'm so jazzed about this is because it actually has worked for me in the context of studying the Bible. I don't want to just study with my head. Actually, I do want to just study with my head, but I'm realizing more and more, I also need to feel it. It's got to hit my heart, but it can't just stay there. I also need to act on it. There has to be obedience in my life. There needs to be something on the outside of me, not all just sort of tucked in in my head and my heart. And so as I've personally been doing this and I've been doing it with some friends, I'm seeing real transformation. And I think that's because it's holistic learning. So I'm now taking it and applying it to my relationships with other people. And I always wanna share anything that's been helpful to me just to hope that it might be helpful to you. So that's what today is about. This is about how this has affected my marriage, or at least what we're trying to apply by thinking through the lens of head, heart, and hands. And I got the idea specifically for my marriage after doing a lot of thinking about male friendships. I'm someone who has not had male friends and I realized three or four years ago, oh, I'm missing out on 50% of the body of Christ by blocking them out of my life. But by inviting them into my life, I want to be careful and I want to be healthy. Since I spent all that time thinking about my friendships with the opposite sex, my strengths and my weaknesses, I realized, duh, of course, where I'm weak in my friendships, where I'm most tempted, I need to be the strongest in my marriage. So that sent Jared and I down a rabbit hole of just, in a fun way, exploring and trying to figure this out with one another. What does that look like in our marriage? Like, what exactly do I need to connect with him? And then what does he need to connect with me? After we had spent all this time talking about it, I had this great idea. I was like, you know what? Let's actually do two weekends. One weekend will be my weekends where however I want to connect, that's what we're going to do. I get to dream big and listen, I'm dreaming big. And then you have a weekend, Jared, where you get to connect however you want to connect. Like, I am just here for it. I'm here to serve you. So the conversation you're about ready to hear is right before we're going on his weekend trip. He got to dream big. This is what he chose to do and why he chose to do it. So I asked you the question of what you needed the most from me, whether it was my head, like my intellect, whether it was my heart, like relational connection. And by the way, he's a heart person first. He's heart first, I'm head first. Which yep. I kind of thought you were gonna say you needed like relational connection or do you need a vibe, hands, all that that comes with that. Yeah. So what did you think at first you needed most from me? I mean, I definitely knew uh, I needed your brain because like you, you've always asked like, you know, what can I do for you? And I don't really want you to do anything for me. Like I, I'll, you know, I kind of know what I need to do and I'll just do it. Um, and like just us spending time together, like we had dinner the other night and it was like during our, no, we had, uh, we were getting ice cream and we were watching the sunset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we're just talking and I was like, oh, well, man, I didn't realize how much I needed this. And so that stuff just kind of comes naturally. It's the brain side of things where, you know, there's just certain things like as I'm trying to figure stuff out, I go, man, I just really could use some help on this. And here's the problem. Because you said this to me and it made, it's come back to my mind. Do you remember what you said? When we were talking about this and he's like, Melissa, I think I need your brain the most. That is the least way that I connect with him. It's the least I just naturally want from you. Yep. And I'm like, please don't say my brain. Please don't say my brain. And you're like, I think I need your brain the most. I'm like, oh. And then you said, I feel like everyone else gets your brain yep. except for me. Yep. And that was like, oh, it was a gut punch because it's true. And I want to say the reasons why it's true is if we were to rewind, I was thinking about this this morning. When we first met, like I was so attracted to and actually am still very attracted to his vibe, his energy. If you don't know him, he is, um, you bring a lot of energy. I know you can't <laughs> see it now, but this man has so much energy. So I was actually dating a guy, not Prison Mike. I'm Prison Mike. 
another guy, did you know this? Who went to UVA, this guy had waited for me, I, I didn't know this, had been like strategically waiting until I turned 18, he was 21, and then uh, he was waiting for me to break up with Prison Mike, the, the guy that I had dated forever. And we had worked together for summers, just on the summers, for like four or five years. And as soon as I had broken up with him, I had turned 18, he asked me out, very intelligent, very kind, very like his life was set up. I met you. So I'm, I guess I was kind of dating him. I guess I was not all that interested. I met you with, and I was the exact opposite. Oh, I didn't really like, have much of a future. I was kind of I a dummy, <laughs> um, but I, I had so fun much. with life. You, you know what? You, this is like, if you could imagine this guy, um, real big guy and with a backpack, he always wore a backpack <laughs> and on the inside of his backpack were crayons in, in order. Yeah. Like they were like, perfection in order with coloring books and laser tag guns. Yeah. And I'm what like, a catch, sign right? me up. I, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Sign me up for that energy. Like I, I was very attracted to that. Like this is what I want. Anyway, all that to say, it's not specific to Jared that I don't want to connect with my brain and in a romantic relationship. Yeah. That's just how I'm wired. Like that's not what I'm looking for in a relationship. I'm looking for vibe and energy and Jared is so grounded and present. It's like, um, I surround myself with people like Jared where I can ride, I don't have a whole lot of energy. And so I like to ride the wave of your energy. And what I, what I like to do is to be able to come home and totally disconnect my brain because I give my brain out so much and I enjoy that. But at home, I was, I think at home, I'm, I'm more almost childlike with you, playful, um, you see a side of me that no one else in the world sees. That, that All that to say is I'm not making an excuse, but I am saying I've never given him my brain in a way that I know how to do it. So I'm nervous. We've been married for 25 years. We're going away. Tell him what we're going away to do. So for the last several years, I've been able to uh, teach at our summer camp. Uh, for the last two years, including this year, um, I am teaching middle schoolers. And if you've never been around middle schoolers, they, they require a whole lot of extra kind of planning. Creativity. Um, last year, I was, I think, night three in, and a little guy not but four feet in front of me was dead asleep. Um, so I'm like, okay, I got to pick up my game a little bit this year. So it's it's usually a pretty big hike to, because it's, it's teaching back to back to back every single night. Um, then just, you know, going to bed at one o'clock in the morning. They're physically tired. Yeah. yeah. And so, and it's just a lot. And so it's not just writing a normal uh, lesson, a normal sermon. It's like writing a lesson. Then on top of it, I'm interweaving a game in the middle of it. So it's just a lot. It's, it's a lot of writing. And so, so when I asked you, I asked you, how can I give you my brain? Like if you had a dream of a weekend, what would your dream be? And this is what you said. Yep. What'd and you say? For us to be able to storyboard it out, to walk through um, because there's so many times where, I mean, a lot of the pieces I've got, but then I hit these like pieces where I'm just like, shoot, I don't know how to get forward. I don't know how to. And so I'll come in and be like, Hey hun. And you'll be like, I'm reading. I'm disconnected. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to think. All right. I'll come back later, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So this weekend we are headed to a cabin for two solid nights. So yep. three days, two nights, we are going to story book out the book of Ruth. We are going to think together. We're bringing, not a whiteboard, we're bringing like those huge post-it notes. We're yep. gonna stick to the wall, we've got markers. So I was gonna tell you and I was gonna tell my friends about what I'm nervous about. I was telling Bible Lab last night. So Bible Lab is my group of friends. It's around a circle. We focus on group learning, which means we learn about one another so that we can learn more about God and the Bible from each other. So there's lots of collaboration. We've been doing this for two years now. I really know these women and they know how I think and how I operate when I'm in a head first environment. So I'm, I'm telling them what we're doing and I'm like, okay guys, help me out because I'm nervous. It, this is what I love about Bible Lab because we work so hard on understanding one another, they knew exactly what my pitfalls would be. Do you wanna hear some of them? I do. So um, I'll give you like the main better thought. In Bible Lab we do my thought plus your thought equals a better thought, meaning Collaboration is where it's at. The combination of ideas working together is where we get these better thoughts. So this was the better thought for me. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Connecting, not correcting. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be appreciated. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> they know me so well. It makes me feel so loved and known. And <laughs> and they were saying things like this. Katie like pops up and she's like, Melissa, the more you care, and I think what I would say is the more ownership I have, she's like, the more you'll argue and debate and the louder you get. I'm like, oh, that's right. And so Becky, who was beside me, was like, yes, you need to realize that you don't own it. You're there to help him. So what I'm gonna be working on is staying engaged because I'm either on or off, like I'm that kind of person. So I've gotta find the middle ground, meaning where I know it's yours. It's not mine, but I'm there to fully help you in your style and your way of thinking, not Melissa's way of thinking. And so that's my aim, but I do feel nervous because I can be overbearing, would you say? What? (laughs) A little overbearing, (laughs) a little opinionated. A little forceful. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't want to be that. I want to be helpful to you. So is there anything in front of our friends that you would like to tell me? Like that your hope for the weekends? Most stories that most accounts that we read in the Bible are is a male person, male, male character. Male perspective. Right. And so I'm just excited for the Ruth side of things. And so it just feels silly and... Uh, wrong for me to go well i'm just going to assume that i know what ruth and naomi felt in this story so i think having your perspective from that side of things but also just kind of helping me connect and being able to uh where you bring so much of the depth of scripture i like going into that but it's so much more your forte so i'm looking forward to you kind of filling in the spaces where i'm kind of lacking in those areas and it's a good thing we are complete opposites and so yeah, where so, I fill in, where, where you lack, and you fill in where I lack. So you probably wouldn't create a game? I 100% wouldn't create a game. <laughs> Bethlehem Trail is what he's doing, which yes. I actually think is brilliant. All right, we've got to go. We're running late. Yeah. But next week, what we'll do is we'll sit back down and we'll share with you guys how it went. If there were any pitfalls, what those were. If there was any wins, which I hope there is, what that was. Like, what this connecting weekend will be like for us as we are really working on deeply connecting would yeah. you say this this year has been one where personally i feel the most emotionally physically intimately connected with you of our whole marriage and i want to keep that ball rolling and so we're just digging in deeper to what that looks like yep. because now because i can be selfish i'm like oh wait a second he also needs to connect with me and what does that look like and so that's what we're doing yep and we get to do some hammocking and some relaxing making s'mores making s'mores all so much fun yes all right we'll see you guys next week. Here's the cute little cabin that Jared found for us for the weekend. And if you want to stick around this video, we share our marriage story, how God saved our marriage. And I don't say that lightly. Our marriage is a miracle. See you next week.